I am here. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't go back to the UK. Well, I did for a vacation, but I didn't leave to join Jack, which a lot of you thought I did. I haven't. I'm still here. I still work here. Don't worry. You don't need to panic. I'm not going anywhere. Just took a short break. The horror genre pumps out dozens of movies each and every year. However, unlike most genres, a lot of them are duds, with it being hard to find a genuinely good scare these days. However, a lot of horrors are overlooked, whether due to their marketing or their style. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 greatest horror movies nobody's watched part 2. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. And with that, Let's jump in. Coming in at 5, Hush 2016. Hush is a 2016 slasher film directed by Mike Flanagan, the man behind The Haunting of Hill House. It also stars his real life wife Kate Siegel, also from Haunting of Hill House. The film follows a deaf writer who retreated into the woods to live a solitary life, however she now must fight for her life in silence when a masked killer appears in her window. Now this film is truly wonderful in so many different ways, not only does it expertly build fear around such a simple premise, but it also isn't torture porn. Our protagonist isn't limited, but instead takes on her attacker through other heightened senses. You root for her most of the time out loud as she faces off against her foe inside her home while everything around her remains completely silent. The movie was an absolute hit among film critics with the movie holding a 91% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. With the general consensus reading, Hush navigates the bloody waters of home invasion thrillers and incisive slashes for a contemporary horror puree. If that isn't good enough for you though, horror legend himself Stephen King wrote that, I quote, How good is Hush, up there with Halloween and even more, wait until dark. White knuckle time on Netflix. Moreover, what makes this movie so superb is the fact that it manages to accomplish three major feats, fear, realism and empowerment. It is honestly one of the best horrors I've watched in a very, very long time. In at 4, The Fourth Kind, 2009. Tell me about the owl. It doesn't look like a normal owl. There's no owl. It's not an owl. <laughs> The Fourth Kind is a 2009 science fiction horror movie starring Mila Jovovich. The movie is a pseudo documentary purporting to be based on real events in Nome, Alaska in 2000, in which psychologist Dr. Abigail Emily Abbey Tyler uses hypnosis to uncover memories from her patients of alien abduction, and finds evidence suggesting that she may have been abducted as well. Now, alien movies that provide genuine chills are incredibly hard to come by these days, with nothing quite being able to top the likes of Alien or The Thing. Saying that, The Fourth Fourth Kind is yet another take on the found footage subgenre, however it is unique in the sense that it is presented through police footage, tape psychology sessions, interviews with alleged subjects, as well as staged reenactments. Although the film was absolutely panned by critics, it does successfully capture the real fear behind the idea of extraterrestrials and abductions. And just like Twin Peaks, the owls are not what they seem. Now as I said before, the film received mostly negative reviews from critics, many of whom were offended that the film attempted to use the real life tragedies of missing and deceased gnome citizens in order to make money using a fictitious story about alien abduction. Fair enough. Regardless of the criticism though, the movie is genuinely terrifying and uncomfortably blurs the lines between reality and nightmare, with an ending that is incredibly hard to watch. It is honestly a must see, trust me. In at 3, House at the End of the Street 2012. Hey, do you need a ride? No, I'm fine. This is my driveway. No, it's not. You just moved in on Sycamore Lane. I live next door. You're Ryan Jacobson. Yeah. House at the End of the Street is a 2012 psychological horror film directed by Mark Tonderi and stars Jennifer Lawrence. The film's plot revolves around a teenage girl, Alyssa, who along with her newly divorced mother, Sarah, moves to a new neighborhood only to discover that the house at the end of the street was the site of a gruesome double murder committed by a girl named Carrie Ann, who disappeared without a trace. Alyssa then starts a relationship with Carrie Ann's brother, Ryan, who lives in the same house. Now I should preface this point by saying that the first half of this thriller is predictable, however, before you know it, the movie does a complete 180 and is suddenly not predictable. Now, the film didn't win over critics, with the movie holding an approval rating of 12% on Rotten Tomatoes, with the general consensus reading, poorly conceived, clumsily executed and almost completely bereft of scares. House at the End of the Street strands its talented star in a film as bland as its title. Despite its negative reviews, the movie itself 
itself feels like an homage to classic 70s horrors in the backwoods where safety is non-existent. What truly was its downfall was the fact that it was marketed as a run of the mill teen movie, however in my opinion it's worth checking out. In at 2 As Above So Below 2014 Keep it slow and steady yeah? I think I'm stuck. Just breathe with me please. It's okay. What was that? As Above So Below was a 2014 horror film directed and written by John Eric Dowdle and co-written by his brother Drew. The film follows archaeologist Scarlett Marlowe who has devoted her entire life to finding one of history's greatest treasures, Flamel's Philosopher's Stone. According to legend, the artifact can grant eternal life and turn any metal into gold. When she learns that the stone is hidden underground in the catacombs of Paris, she assembles a crew to guide and document her historic mission. As they begin their descent though, the team members have no way of knowing that they are entering their own personal hell. The movie is absolutely terrifying, but it's one of the more forgotten horror movies in recent years, simply because it is found footage, with many of us growing tired of the oversaturated format. However, believe me when I say that the handheld style is the least memorable part of the movie, with As Above So Below existing somewhere between an Indiana Jones action flick and something similar to The Cave or The Descent. Now, for some surprising reason, the film did not sit well with critics, with the movie currently holding a 26% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, with the general consensus reading, after an intriguing setup that threatens to claw its way out of found footage overkill, as above so below plummets into cliched mediocrity. I however wildly disagree with these sentiments and believe this horror to be wildly effective and absolutely terrifying. And finally coming in at number 1, Silent House 2011. Dad? What are you doing? I just thought I heard something upstairs. Daddy? Silent House is a 2011 independent psychological horror film directed by Chris Kentis and Laura Lau, and stars Elizabeth Olsen. The plot focuses on a young woman who is terrorised in her family vacation home while cleaning the property with her father and uncle. The film itself is most notable for its use of real time footage, as well as manufactured appearance of a single continuous shot. What starts as another home invasion movie quickly becomes an assault on the psyche, taking us all by surprise. Like the majority of our list, this film didn't resonate with critics, with the film holding a 41% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. With the consensus reading, I quote, Silent House is more technically proficient and ambitious than most fright fests, but it also suffers from a disappointing payoff. However, in my opinion, Silent House manages to grip viewers with unrelenting paranoia, not to mention the one take style leaving us just as lost as Elizabeth Olsen's character, as we navigate a home that has more secrets than we initially realised. Not to mention the movie has a superb twist that you will never see coming, and pay Pays off in every single way. It is utterly disturbing. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with that list? Were there any horror movies that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, and perhaps we can do a part three. Before I go, though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top five scary horror movies you can't watch alone, part three. The 13th Caesar said unpopular opinion, but I genuinely thought it follows was trash. I mean, to each their own, we can't all agree on the same thing, but I thought it follows was one of the scariest things I'd ever watched. I specifically remember where I was. It's in my bedroom in Calgary, and I couldn't move. I was paralyzed with fear. So that's my story. <laughs> Joshua Villavicencio said, Of course, Lucy is a gunner. There is no better horror than Mustafi defending. Whew, I felt that. Mustafi defending is my worst nightmare. Every time I see him on the team sheet, I want to. James Vance said, Wreck was good. The remake Quarantine, not so much. Wreck was absolutely amazing. One of the best horror films there is, especially one of the best Spanish horror films there is. Quarantine might be one of the worst horror films I've ever seen in my life. Why remake something that didn't need to be remade? Just because it's in English. No one cares. I can handle subtitles. We all can. We can all read. Most of us can read. Edmund Williams said, Hey Lucy, you should do audiobooks. I love your accent. You should do the book on Jaws. You're not the first person to tell me I should do audiobooks, but I grow very tired of my own voice and I get bored of talking sometimes. So maybe not. I like what I do. So maybe I'll just record you the Jaws audiobook and I'll just send it your way. If you want that, let me know. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary bit. And until next time, see you later.